Teachers who quit, when was the moment you realized that it wasn't for you? No me but my wife, she was an engineer at a good company on the east coast. Left because she wanted more rewarding work. Soon after she is doing clinicals at a school on the rough side of our hometown. She was the kind of student teacher who showed up early, ate lunch with the kids, stayed late, and followed up with parents. Anyway. Some months in she has repeatedly had trouble with some students, they came from troubled homes and brought a lot with them into the class each day. She tried working with them one-on-one, -on -one, working with the administration, and the parents. More than one set of parents said stop calling. And the administration told her to send them to the principal's office, where they could sit all day and focus on the good kids. Eventually, the futility set in. She was the only one who cared. Not the kids, administration, other teachers, or even their parents. She finally wore herself out after a couple years with no support at work and no one appreciating her efforts, except me of course. She's back in aerospace now. I worked in a high needs behavior class. I got hit, punched, scratched and spat on daily, but every day I went back and did my best for those kids. I was so battered and bruised that my husband wouldn't shop with me anymore because people would stare and sometimes even comment to him about his mistreating me. It was sickening, but I loved my job and every one of those kids. One day was called to the office to talk. It was Christmas time and things weren't great at home and as anyone with kids knows the holidays makes children especially high strung so things were also wild in the classroom. My boss said you seem awfully stressed and I thought how nice of her to notice so I agreed that yes I was struggling. She said you have 6 weeks to sort it out or I'll have to let you go. I was crushed, it literally broke me. 6 weeks to get less stressed. How does that even work? I found myself just showing up to show up and I realized that wasn't fair for me or for the kids. 6 weeks later I get a call back to the office. I am congratulated on the amazing turnaround and sent back to class. I was baffled. I was more upset and stressed than ever and they congratulate me? More and more I showed up to work just for the paycheck. One day I just decided screw it, I wasn't a teacher anymore I was a robot fearful of showing any negativity. I quit that week. Never went back to teaching. Taught at a juvenile delinquent school when the accusations of children required no proof or consistency, and to be exonerated took divine intervention. When a kid with a violent history a mile wrong swings a stapler at you, gashing your forehead, because he was dared to then as you restrain him until help arrives. You hurt his wrist. Then your school believes his story that I dropped the n-bomb to him. Which caused the outburst. Even though two other staff members saw the entire thing. And the school called the police and tried to have me charged for assault. I had a student, maybe 11 or 12, sitting with me and having pizza. I asked how her life was going and she says well, my dad's a drug dealer so he's always got people coming over to sell or buy drugs or play cards so I can sleep. My mom's dying because she has a hole in her heart and they can't fix it. And I have a boyfriend but I'm afraid to tell my mom because she'll tell my dad and he'll beat me. Just normal, like this was everyday stuff. So, as a mandatory reporter I go to my dean of students and tell him all this, and he just gets irritated and goes yeah, but that doesn't excuse her behavior. That's when I knew I was done. When I realized that I was being more micromanaged every year. I expected a lot of oversight when I was a new teacher. I actually had more people watching my every move and every word after a master's degree and 15 years experience. I never had a single complaint. Parents and students loved me, even requested me. Administrators needing to justify their jobs were constantly in my classroom or calling pointless meetings to discuss pointless things. I spent less and less time teaching and more and more time filing out meaningless forms, responding to emails, and sitting through meetings. Two 16-year-old kids were facing each other. I had the classroom seats in a U-shape and were silently challenging each other to fight while I was in the middle of a lesson. They suddenly jumped up from their chairs and came at each other with 8-inch knives with me in between them. I was pretty built, having been a stonemason's apprentice in college to help pay my way through, but these kids were both bigger than me. Without thinking I grabbed each by their collars and shouted sit, down. I didn't start shaking until that evening, I was done a week later. Edit thank you for all the upvotes and a special thank you for the gold kind stranger. I had a six-year-old pull a knife on me while screaming I will kill you. This was the culmination of a lot of various incidents with the same kid. What was most infuriating was the parents claiming they had the sweetest little boy and that we, the school must be liars for saying otherwise. 
Eventually he was transferred to a special school after we filed a report on the various incidents. I felt really bad for the kid because when he wasn't freaking out over something he would be the sweetest guy asking a ton of questions and participating in the activities. But he was highly prone to snapping into hysteria. The incident with the knife happened in this after school setting where the kids go to play and have fun. Apparently another kid had done something he disliked so he was kicking and spitting on him when I pulled him away. He ran straight to the drawer and found a little kitchen knife. Due to his size it was pretty easy to wrestle out of his hands though so no harm done. I guess dealing with shitty parents was what made me change my career. I stopped when my annual review with the new program Dean focused on the 10% of student reviews that were negative rather than the 90% that were positive. There are too many aggravations working against teachers. At the least, the administration has to have your back. Where I realized that I couldn't even escape teaching in my dreams my life was so focused on teaching that every night I had nightmares about it. Followed by the pain I feel in my chest from heart palpitations my heart would constantly race and then stop altogether. Finally, when on the last day of Thanksgiving break, I realized I had cried every single day because I didn't want to go back to school. I was so low that I had planned my own suicide to get out of teaching, but I figured life had to improve if I just quit teaching, even if I'd be another unemployed millennial statistic. I lasted 15 months. The only thing that makes me feel a little better about the situation is that the retired cop who replaced me only lasted three, he had been an officer in the same city I was teaching. When the corporate job offered me three times the salary and a 12% annual bonus. Now, my kids can afford to go to the college where dad used to teach. The wasn't one defining moment that made me decide to quit, but after the decision was made, there was a moment that solidified it. There was this kid, to say he wasn't bright is an understatement. He probably should have been diagnosed at some point as special education, but never was. He was also an asshole. I taught 8th grade math, and he literally couldn't even multiply. So I would give him the same tests I gave my special education students. He'd usually fail anyway, but not as bad. Anyhow, he never figured out he was given a different test. When I made the different versions, they were essentially the same questions, just with much easier numbers to work with. Well one day, I was grading his test, and he missed every single question. Weird thing was, he had all the correct answers to the normal test. However he showed no work. So there was literally no way with the numbers he had, he could get the answers he got. So I called his mom in, I had to stay like an hour later than normal to meet with her. I presented her the evidence, which most people would find pretty convincing. She just turned to him and said did you cheat? He of course denies it. Then she looks at me and says you say he cheated, he says he didn't, I don't know who to believe. I got up and left right then. Parents are the reason most teachers leave the profession. They tend to make the teacher the enemy quite often. Plus, they don't want to acknowledge that their child can be a little shit. First I'll tell you the moments when I nearly quit. When a kid with serious mental health issues stabbed another kid with a pencil and I was told to just keep a better eye on him. When a parent complained about me but I wasn't told the nature of the complaint just reprimanded, generally. When 16 year old boys hit on me and I actually considered going out drinking with them because I had no social life. But the moment, looking back, was when I was hospitalized with exhaustion. And my amazing boyfriend, who had been coming over. Marking tests and proofing papers every evening for months. Lay down on the cold hard hospital floor and slept beside me in case I was upset overnight. I realized that I wanted a life with him, not a dull existence where I poured all of myself into my job and had nothing left for us. I loved teaching but it wanted all of me. Dawn till midnight, 7 days a week prepping, marking, planning. I quit. I got a better job. I married that amazing guy and we have an amazing daughter. On weekends we go to the park and play. When I tried to have a conversation about literature with the head of my department and got a blank stare in return. I taught English doing my PhD now and am surrounded by faculty and students who are significantly more engaged. So many things. Figured I got paid 9 hours to handle special needs and the future of our country and other teachers didn't have it that much better. Watched an entire class plagiarize an easy essay because they couldn't fathom how to write something original. Turned in a girl for skipping class only to have to write a police report on why I didn't call her a stupid bitch and hit her. She never got punished for that. Observed a kid who I knew had to be a psychopath convince a freshman to steal a phone. Freshman got caught in 10 days in juvie. Psychopath walked free. 
you're gonna have to pay teachers a lot more to deal with that crap. My decision to quit was a two-step process first, I taught high school English in rural Illinois. When I wasn't debating students after class because they didn't like the B I gave them I was frequently given implicit instructions by the administration to pass my failing students. Then I moved to Washington DC and taught in the DC public school system and realized that I was merely a babysitter, barely any of my students could read, but the goal of my school was containment. Priority was keeping the students in the classroom and not in the hallways. I was told I couldn't assign homework because the students wouldn't do it anyway. I couldn't give my students any textbooks because the students just dumped them in the trash after school. If kids are seen with books in their neighborhoods they were often ridiculed and sometimes beaten by their peers. Parent-teacher conferences often meant meeting with grandma whose parenting style was Jesus will take care of it. When I was in college I had dreams of teaching Julius Caesar to young people. Teaching turned out to be quite different. I have huge respect for the teachers who can do it. I could not. First year and a half after I got licensed I was a substitute. Worked about 95% of the days available, but it was pretty depressing to see that I made about $14,000 a year. Put out my resume and finally got an interview and offer in a small, rural school district. Started off well enough, but a small clique of parents decided I wasn't sufficiently deferential to them or their kids and decided to make my life hell. Complaints to the principal and school board pretty much every day too much homework. Not enough homework. Quizzes too often. Tests too hard. Too many projects. Too many notes. Too many handouts. Not enough lecturing. Not enough book work. I was mean to so and so, etc. The principal was in his first year, after just one year as the assistant principal. Dude was in no way ready to handle the job, and kept giving me contradictory instructions. What finally did it for me was being told that I couldn't lecture. Had to write all the students notes up for them. Had to give the students the answers to the test before testing them. And to stop being so hard by making them discuss the quotes I put up on the board every day. The cherry on top was when he told me that no one could go scuba diving with sharks like I told students I had when asked what I'd done on a vacation. As a giant fuck you after I handed in my resignation I played the video of me on my second shark dive when I was getting my shark diver specialty certification and discussed some of the dives I'd done over the years. The next year I went back to subbing, until I was offered a full-time position working for the Boy Scouts of America as a district executive. Never looked back. Now I'm a SR Linux Systems admin under contract to the DoD and making two five times what I made as a teacher, and five times what I made as a sub. Couldn't be happier. Nepotism is a major problem in smaller school districts. Yes men, family members, and friends will get hired as the school system is one of the better paying jobs in the county. All of this is done in return for loyalty and not questioning if decisions are best for the kids. One of the bigger nails in the coffin was when I was pepper sprayed by the school resource officer after myself and another teacher had broken up a fight and were sending students back to class. He sprayed to disperse the crowd spraying myself and our female assistant principal in the face and causing three students to have asthma attacks. For as little as I was being paid, I could find a safer place to work where people were less incompetent. Currently teaching just the sheer amount of lesson planning during the evenings and weekends definitely encroaches on your free time. Man I wish I had just stayed at the corporate gig. Not a teacher, but my buddy was a teacher in the south. He was teaching at a Catholic school in a small, but not tiny, town. His students were primarily poor with parents not terribly involved in their lives. There were a lot of behavioral issues constant fights, yelling, disruptions, etc. The academics were predictably weak because the students largely didn't care about school at all. Kids were found with weapons of some kind, knives, shanks with some frequency, but it wasn't a daily occurrence. The final straw came when a particularly problematic student was causing a huge disruption in his classroom by screaming and flipping over desks, which alone wasn't that big of an incident. He escorted this student down to the principal's office, as he had many times before. Except this time the student insulted my buddy the whole time. He explained the situation to the administrators and returned to his class. A few minutes later an announcement came over the PA system inside the school and the principal mocked and insulted my buddy for what he did. The principal made a snarky comment about not being able to control your class. The troublemaker then returned to class, without facing any kind of discipline, and tried to provoke a fight with my buddy. My buddy noped right out of his classroom, walked out the door, and joined the military. 
My reasons for quitting after one year in no particular order. 1. I was hired to teach subject A. I was then forced into teaching subject A and subject B. I am not certified for subject B. I told admin. They said it's not an end of course test class. It doesn't matter. It matters to the kids that chose to take the class. I would stay up past midnight teaching myself the material to teach them the next day. 2. I worked 6.45 to 5 then hours more at home. My kids were in school daycare 60 hours a week. 3. Bomb threat. SWAT. 4. Gang fight in my classroom. Kid launched himself over a desk to attack another kid in the middle of my lesson. This was after two months of begging admin to separate these two kids because violence. 5. Threat of active shooter. No injuries county and city police. Kid was an idiot. Also black in a mostly black school, that's why you never heard about it. 6. Drunk or high girl in bathroom. Lockdown. 7. Drug raid. Lockdown. Staff cars also searched. 8. Multiple public threats against staff online. I was not a target but the lovely kid, C5 was in my 7th period. 9. I spent $500 in 2 months buying supplies for my class labs. I stopped counting after that. 10. My younger son has special needs diagnosed during that school year. Decided being home with was in everyone's best interest.